International Indoor Arena here in Birmingham and to the 1995 Gladiator Heats. Well, backstage, four more contenders are limbering up in anticipation of another action-packed hour against the might of our gladiators. And this year, the challenges and the prizes are even greater. Oh, you're right there, Ollie. I'll tell you what. Whoever actually gets through to the finals and wins, they will have earned these fantastic prizes. £5,000 cash each, a fabulous holiday for two on the Paradise Island in the Bahamas. Woo! Is that it? Oh no, there's one more, Ollie. A fabulous four-wheel drive, off-the-road, family vehicle! up will not walk away empty-handed they'll each take home two thousand pounds so let's get on with the show let's meet the people who are fighting for these prizes tonight the girls are kathy odell and rachel whiteside just one or two people supporting you there kathy tell us a bit about yourself what you do and where you're from I'm a development technician and I'm from Hull. I got the Hull bit. Yeah. I didn't get the development technician. What on earth is that? It's a baker. You're a baker? Oh, brilliant. What sort of things do you bake? Um, we bake um, rich fruit cakes, novelty cakes, sponge cakes and Madeira cakes. Madeira cakes? Now, that wouldn't be why your nickname is The Mighty Madeira. Oh, gosh! You can't be eating too many of the cakes because you're very slim and you're obviously very fit because you're on gladiators. What do you do to keep fit and stay fit? Um, I cycle a lot. I go to, down to the gym four times a week, you know, bodybuilding. And that's about it, really. Well, that sounds like quite a lot. Best of luck to you. Let's hear it for the mighty Madeira, Kathy O'Dell. Now, Rachel, what do you do for a living? I'm a model, actually. What kind of model are you? Um, I do a lot of catwalk, um, advertising, commercials, things like that. So you're one of these beautiful ladies who goes to all these exotic places around the world? Well, I just flew in from Japan last, last week, so um, it was tiring work out there. Well, how did you manage it? You were in Japan modelling. Probably that must have been full-time. At the same time, you've got to get yourself fit and ready for the gladiators. Yeah, I just have to make sure I fit it all in. Now, you're a very pretty young lady, if you don't mind me saying. Do you mind or do you worry about being injured because you could get any facial injuries or anything like that? Well, it's crossed my mind, um, but I have to put it to the back of my mind because otherwise I'll worry about it and then I won't perform as well as I could. Well, I'm sure you'll perform and I'm sure you won't get injured. Off you go, get yourself ready. Off you go, Rachel. Let's hear it for Rachel Whiteside. So while the girls are preparing for their first event, let's meet the guys. Tonight they are Regan Pilkington and Michael Bates. Somebody over there likes you. Regan, tell us about yourself, where you're from and what you do. I'm an engineer and I'm from Bolton. Good old Bolton, Lancashire. Engineer, what sort of engineering bits and things do you do? Well, I program computers, but it's a bit too complex to get into right now. But... You enjoy your work? Uh, I've got to say, yeah. <laughs> of course you do. You also help your dad out, don't you, a little bit? Yeah, my dad's got a fish and chip shop and I help him out now and again. <laughs> He's been getting me some fish sticks for training. Absolutely. So what sort of training do you do? Just general stuff. I'm not into anything seriously, just generally keeping fit. You enjoy it, though, don't you? <laughs> no, I don't, to be honest. <laughs> you do? No. Who likes pain? I don't, and that's why I'm presenting. Listen, let's hear it for Regan! Good luck! OK, Mike, tell us about yourself, firstly. What do you do for a living? Yeah, I work in a council tax department. Oh, hang on. Ollie, did you hear that? This is the man who recovers our taxes. Boo! I think so. Boo! Well, boo! They've got to be paid, am I right? They've yeah, got to be right. paid. Yeah. OK, what hobbies have you got? Well, I do a lot of things. I uh, do a lot of mountain biking, a bit of weights, a lot of running, uh, lots of things to try to keep things different. Don't get specific on one particular thing. Are you really ready for today? Are you as fit as you possibly could be? Never fit as you could be. There's always something extra you can do. But, you know, do my best. And is there anything that worries you? Nothing. No, not a thing. Let me tell the Wolfman that. Yeah. Off you go. Get yourself ready, Mike. Michael Bates! 
the show on the road with our very first event. <laughs> event one, Cathy will be using the Red Bulls and Rachel the Blue. And guarding those five baskets is Panther, Amazon and Falcon. The powerful pinups. Oh, really, John Play ball. One. Kathy O'Dell in the pink. Oh, and into Panther. Rachel Whiteside is in the yellow and seems to be flying faster than the Amazon. Oh, unlucky to rim it. Kathy again. Panther pounces. Rings down her prey. Rachel flattens the falcon and slam dunks a two pointer. Kathy. The Amazon gets rough. Oh, Rachel completely free. Set the basket for an easy three. Not one gladiator near her. Here she comes again. Falcon flies at her. Two more. Too easy. Rachel, a big girl, six foot, 150 pounds, a real handful for the gladiators. Oh, but it's Panther. Finally brings her down. Falcon does a number on Kathy. Some good work from the glads in the tailing seconds of the game. They've lifted their game well. One last gasp for Rachel. Oh, Falcon sweeps her away. Kathy. And down she goes, right there on the timer. Excellent first event for Rachel. And all the family pleased with that. Yeah. Well done, Rachel. Well, that's your first taste. How did you find it? It's great fun. I love it out there. Well, Amazon hit you early on. She hit you pretty hard. And you got up and went on. What about Falcon? I like the way you just shrubbed her off and went for the middle basket. Well, you just got to go for it, haven't you? Do you know how many points you got? I don't know. Seven points! Yeah. Well done. <laughs> that was hard, wasn't it? That is really tough. Took a few heavy knocks, didn't you? Very heavy. You don't know how hard it is until you try it yourself. Well, we always start with this one because it's just a warm-up for you. Really? <laughs> Unfortunately, no points! Let's hear it for anyway. As Fash said, no points for Kathy, but Rachel, seven. Now let's move on to the men's event. Reagan is using the red balls and Michael the blue. And unlucky for them because the five baskets are going to be guarded by the Trojan, Rhino, and the mighty Warrior! Oh, here comes the heavy mob. Over to John Anderson. Contenders, ready! Ladies, ready! Three, two, one! Let's play ball, Regan Pilkington in the red. Chosen's there. Oh, he throws him out of bounds with disdain. Michael Bates in blue. Trojans invariably fair, treats all contenders with equal contempt. Warrior holding Regan. Michael against Rhino. Rhino charges him down. Oh, crunch time. Oh, and he doesn't seem to be getting up. He looks to be injured. The referee stops it. That was a heavy tackle from Rhino. People, people, people on Rhino. Michael's hey. wife concerned, as we all are. Here comes the doc. If you look at that tackle again, Rhino steams in as we expect him to, and the damage is done when they both hit the floor. The doctor giving him the once-over, and it looks like a knee injury. Mike, yeah. can I ask you, can you remember what happened? <laughs> or was yeah. it all blurred? No, I uh, grabbed the ball there, uh, head to the left. Rhino just <laughs> straight into us. So, he normally does, yes, yeah. as he does. Dropped the ball and he kept on going. He kept on pushing over and he just landed full force on the side of my knee. The ball's released, but Rhino's already committed his full weight to the tackle. Let's hope it's nothing too serious. And the doctor helping Michael off for treatment. Johnny, was there, did you see anything wrong with the tackle? Was it fair tackle? No, I think it was a perfectly fair tackle. I think it was an unfortunate situation. It's the kind of thing that can happen when you're playing a tough game like... Powerball, but 
but as far as I'm concerned, everything was entirely above board and perfectly legal. As Michael's parents and wife await news on that injury, in these situations, the substitute contenders pressed into service, and here comes Mike Reno. Hello, Mike. All right? Yeah, I'm doing good. Well, Mike, unfortunately, Michael Bates, as you've probably seen, has gone off with a bad knee. In these circumstances, the stand-in comes in, and you're the lucky man to come in. So introduce yourself and tell us who you are and what you're about. OK, I'm Mike Reno. I originally come from Oxshot in Surrey, but at the moment I'm studying at Oxford Brooks University. Well, it's not the way... You've got a bit of support out there. It's not the way you would have wanted to come in, but still, you're here, and I'm sure you're going to do your best. Yeah, I'm going to do my best. That's what I'm here for. Great stuff. Off you go. Get yourself ready. 37 seconds remain. Three, two, one. And into the lion's den. He comes. In comes Warrior. Oh, and in it goes for two. Great start by Mike Reno. Here comes Regan. Trojan with the tackle. Oh, unlucky. There's no stopping this boy. Regan again. Dummies Rhino. Warrior. Oh, beautiful. What a dummy. He sells him two points and a big tackle from Trojan on Mike. Regan again. Who's the ball away? Regan and Michael from the same end. Rhino takes care of Michael. And Warrior has to get off Regan. Those are the rules and we're running out of time here. What a dramatic event that was. Regan two, Mike two. And in a moment, we'll bring you an update on Michael Bates. Well done, Mike. A little bit hard, not that it was the start you wanted, really. But you got yourself one basket, which is two points. OK, that's good. I'm glad I got a score on the table. That's enough for me. I can't ask for much more than that. Well done. Let's hear it from Mike. <laughs> Regan, all this stopping and starting, it's not fun, is it? No, it's hard work, and it's hot under these lights as well. Well, well done. You also got one basket, two points. Well done, Regan. <laughs> So, let's go down to the high-tech medical suite where Michael Bates is lying on the physio's couch. Oh, disappointed. Very disappointed. Um, what, 10, 15 seconds into the game? Can't believe it. I've never, ever had any injuries up like that before. It's... <laughs> disappointing for me and the people who have come down to support us. Can I say? Commiserations to Michael. We wish him a speedy recovery after one event scores are two apiece. Next event. You should know the rules by now. 60 seconds to climb 36 feet to the top, and after seven seconds, our contenders will be chased by our gladiators. And tonight, Rachel's going to be chased by Jet. And Kathy's going to be pursued by Lightning. Earlier, model girl Rachel told us how preparing for gladiators has influenced her. I've, I've learned something here mentally which I've not gone through before, not being a competitor in a sport. Um, I'm having to deal with that side of things and it's an up and down every minute of the day and it, it's, it's going to make me tough, I'm sure. Three, two, one! Kathy in pink, or oh, a faltering start by her, Rachel in yellow. And a slow start by both girls. They'll need to climb harder because here comes trouble. It's lightning behind Kathy. Jets after Rachel and already within striking distance. Yes, Jets locked in. She's got a grip on Rachel. Oh, lightning's lost a grip on the wall. And Jets about to give Rachel a flying lesson. Look at her go. And look at Kathy. Takes advantage of lightning's unforced error. She's up and over for 10. Delighted. Well done, Kathy. You needed those points, didn't you? <laughs> God, I can't believe it. I feel like crying. It's frightening, isn't it, with oh, a gladiator chasing you? It really is terrifying knowing that a gladiator is coming after you. I couldn't see from here, but did she actually touch your leg at all? Did you get did you get I near you? I felt her touch my my right foot. But I managed to dodge. Thank you me. certainly did. And you got yourself your ten points! Yeah. Well done! Well done indeed. After two events, Kathy climbs to ten, Rachel stays on seven, back down to Ulrika. So now we move into the men's hall, where Mike is going to be chased by the Cobra. And Regan's going to be followed by Hunter. Earlier, 
Mike took time out from training to tell us what it's like to be on standby. I can't really say how I'll feel if I get called in, because uh, the whole time it's just spent. I'm just, I'm just here, I'm getting on with it, I'm just having a good time. I'm not concerned whether I get on it or not. I'm just concentrating on having a good time, getting to meet everyone, just enjoying the experience. But uh, if I did get on, that would just put the icing on the cake. It, I think it would be pretty incredible. Three. And pretty Two. incredible if he can pull 10 One. points for reaching the top first. Mike in blue, Regan in red, and the Gladiators on their tails. Cobra is on Mike. And look at Hunter making short work of that head start and short work of Regan. Now Mike striking out for the top and Cobra striking out on him. Got a grip. Snakes his way up. Coils him up. And rips him down. Great work by the Glads. In the replay, Hunter after computer man Regan quickly downloads him. Cobra, more a decorator than a gladiator, the way he strips that wall. Mike, it took just a little bit longer than anticipated, but he came after you. Yeah, well, we've got a bit of a less head start this year, but uh, I knew it was going to be quick, but I was just trying to get up there as fast as well possible. Obviously not fast enough, though. It's exciting, though, isn't it, being chased by Cobra? Um, I mean, that's what I find. Yeah, maybe if you're a girl, it's not quite so exciting for me. You did terrific work there, Cobra. Yeah, you can't afford any mistakes, and fortunately I didn't make any, and uh, took advantage of a little bit of stumbling there in the beginning. What can I say, boys? That was quite quick and painless, wasn't it? It's quick, it's very quick. I should have done better, though. I knew the handle I wanted, and I missed it. I should have done better. Even so, we were quick, Ronnie. You looked really mean. <laughs> yeah, well, the contestants are getting better every year, which means the gladiators are going to train harder and harder every year to give them a run for their money. There's a big prize at the end of this show, and we're going to make it worthwhile. Well, he took no prisoners. Let's hear it for Hunter, Cobra, Mike and Regan. Well done. Yes, after two events, no prisoners and no scores. Both Regan and Mike stay on two. Well, we're just going to take a short break, but don't go away because we're going to be straight back with one of this season's new stupendous games. So join us here on The Gladiators. Welcome back to the National Indoor Arena here in Birmingham where we're just about to kick off part two with one of this season's brand new games. It's a game of tag, gladiator style, only it's played around a huge ball suspended 40 feet above the arena floor. And we like to call it Pendulum. <laughs> and our first female contender is Kathy, and tonight she's facing Vogue. Over to John Anderson. Hey. The pendulum! start poles apart. Vogue will be trying to snatch the flag from Kathy's back. If Kathy can evade her for 40 seconds, she'll score five points. If she hangs on for the full minute, she'll net ten. At the moment, Kathy, a baker, hanging on to that giant crust, trying to figure out where Vogue is. And Vogue still trying to figure out where Kathy is. Vogue's exploring the North Pole at the moment, while Kathy's safe playing a Southern Bell. And that pendulum ball, five metres in diameter, and Kathy directly beneath Vogue. She can see the gladiator, but can the gladiator see her? Well, she's good for five points. Can she stay on and grab the ten? At the moment, it's Kathy O'Dell and Vogue, oh dear. You'd think Vogue had a job in merchant banking the way she's lost her bearings. Kathy really into the swing of this event made the right decision and I think you could say 10 points nicely in the bag for the mighty Madeira <laughs> Kathy's family and friends delighted again well done Kathy that was terrific I mean 
It's very exciting to watch, but you must describe to us what it's like to be up there. It's one of this season's new games. We want to know what it's like. It's absolutely brilliant. I want to go on it again. It's really good. Really enjoy it. What does it feel like when it's actually swinging? And obviously, you can't even see where the gladiator is. You're having to anticipate the whole time. Um, you don't know that it's moving. You don't. Really? Honestly, uh, you just got to move. You just got to move, and it's really good. I really enjoyed it. Well, you obviously did. You scored 10 points. Well done, Kathy. standing here no she's underneath it's very difficult yeah, it's very easy for the audience to actually see where the contender is but when you're the gladiator you know I was searching and searching and searching trying to find where she was I saw her and my foot got caught so I was really clambering down trying to get down to the bottom because I could see her and once she'd gone underneath when you were circling around the top couldn't see her well you did the best you could let's hear it for Vogue well done Tonight, she's facing Zodiac. Over to John Anderson. Set the pendulum. Well, can Zodiac fare any better? She has proved to be pretty formidable in previous attempts in this event. on the right side, which is any side furthest from the Gladiator. And Zodiac needs to make a correct prediction as to Rachel's whereabouts. And it looks like she's done just that. Zodiac orbiting above Rachel, looking to capture the contender's colour. Zodiac manoeuvring into striking distance. Oh, and Mum can't bear to watch. She knows the end's in sight. And so is Rachel's pennant. Just hanging on while Zodiac zeroes in, flags are down. Well, you can look now. By the way, she lost. Rachel, you looked a little bit tentative there. Yeah, it's quite hard to hold on if you go underneath. Um, it really is quite tough. And the, the net, obviously, you're getting your feet caught in it and the pendulum yeah. is swinging. Yeah, you, it really is difficult, and if you go the same way the gladiator's gone, you know, it's tough. And there's 7,000 people watching you, 14 million people watching you at home. Nerves? Not really. I'm enjoying it. Are you? Yeah. Well, a few more events to go. Let's hear it for Rachel. Well done. Not too bad. <laughs> That's what we like to see in Pendulum. We like to see our gladiators do their jobs. It's a fantastic game. Every year, gladiators introduce new games and they always seem to prove more exciting and more dynamic, and that's my game. Thanks, Birmingham. Let's hear it for Zodiac. Well done. Yes, well done, Zodiac. We said that would be a great event for her. After three events, Kathy swings up to 20. Rachel stays on seven. So now we move into the men's pendulum, and first up, it's Regan. Hunter! Over to John Anderson. Set the pendulum! plays a bit of golf, but this time, instead of swinging at the ball, the ball swinging him. Up against the fastest, most formidable gladiator of the season so far, Hunter, who hasn't put a foot wrong in any of his events, and looks to have the measure of Regan here. Regan of the Flying Squad, desperately trying to claw his way out of trouble, heading for the South Pole, but Hunter's relentless. Oh, he's lost it! The computer buff into the internet. Nil point. In the replay, it was primarily the pressure from the gladiator coupled with the pendulum swing that put paid to Regan. And down he goes. Oh, not that she's biased. Oh, Regan, you might have guessed 
falling off means disqualification and no points. <laughs> Tell me about it, I know that. <laughs> Did you enjoy it, most importantly? Uh, it was good fun, yeah, but it just turned out from the middle of nowhere. And it's very difficult, obviously, I suspect, swinging down at the very bottom, it's very difficult to know where to go. I'm just trying to hide, you know. <laughs> it is a bit like hide and seek, isn't it? How many more games have we got left? <gasps> Another two, I think. Two. I'll oh. do my best. Do we my hope best. so. Let's hear it for Regan. <laughs> Next up on the pendulum, it's Mike. <laughs> and he's going to be facing Saracen. Over to John Anderson. likes to play poker for pennies in his spare time, but his gamble here is to guess from which direction the Saracen will strike. And Saracen is definitely heading north. Mike's staying in the southern hemisphere, and it's certainly tougher to hang on to the pendulum when you're low. That's where the force of the swing is the greatest. Mike trying to gain some height now. Ah, and Saracen trying some circumnavigation. Mike staying put, waving to the fans. And Saracen trying the other way. But it's certainly swinging about up there. And Mike scores five, but can he hang on for ten? Only a few seconds left on the clock. The contender looks to have got it right. He and the Gladiator still poles apart. Mike electing to climb. Looks like Saracen's had the second idea. But it's time out now. Mike's got his 10. And there's Michael Bates injured in Powerball, who Mike replaced, cheering him on. Well, humongous congratulations, Mike. That was terrific. Thanks, Arika. It's an interview, don't you? It's my favourite game. I'm glad it went well. That was, that was wonderful. And at one stage, in fact, when you were climbing underneath the pendulum, it looked a bit like Skytrack. <laughs> yeah, well, I figured that was the hardest route to go, so the less likely is going to be to guarding it, so I just went for it and it paid off. And you got your feet stuck at one tight stage, but that didn't put you off? No, well, he wasn't anywhere near, so I wasn't wide. Well done, Mike. And Sarah, they say there's only one Sarah, but there was no sign of him at all up there. Saracen was there. I mean, he was very evasive up there. Um, win or lose is a very good game, very exciting, and I enjoyed that. It's a good chase. I just couldn't find him. You need some glasses, maybe. Let's hear it for Sarah, and let's hear it for Mike. There is still only one Saracen. I'll catch him next time, don't you worry. And that's a promise. After three events, Regan stays on two. Mike leads to 12. Next event. Shot. And getting ready to swing is a Cathy. And on the other side is a Rachel. And they're going to be swinging against Falcon and Zodiac. Over to John Anderson. Contenders, ready! Gladiators, ready! Three, two, go. All together now. Swing out, sisters. Red for three, blue for two, yellow for one. And both come away with none. Kathy struggling with her upswing there, dangling like a Thunderbird's puppet. Rachel leaps. Checked by Zodiac. Great block. Here comes Kathy again. Up she goes, and a great check by Falcon. Well, that's the way you play this game. A good block there by Zodiac. And they're going to have to think up some better tactics than this. 25 seconds left on the clock. Here comes Rachel. Up she goes. Blocked out by Zodiac. And there's Falcon keeping Rachel at bay. And I'll tell you what, the Gladiators deserve a beer after this. A tremendous performance. They cannot get near that cylinder. Oh, Kathy. 
picks up a point at last. Rachel, oh, so near gets so far. Time up, one point, very disappointing. Great job by the Gladiators. So, let's have a look how the lady scored. Kathy, she scored one point. Oh, she's easily pleased. Unfortunately for Rachel, no points. In the replay, Kathy finally breaks through Falcon's tremendous defence, picks up her points and pops it in the basket. After four events, Kathy's on 21, Rachel's on seven. So, next up is the boys. On his platform, getting ready to try and score some valuable points, is a Reagan! And on the other platform is a Mike! And they're going to be swinging against a Trojan! And a Raider! Swing out, Regan, up he goes, pulls a blue on the first time, that's two points. The shot cords balance to their individual body weight to get the perfect bounce to the ounce. Nice little block from Trojan, but uh, that costs a lot of balls on the floor. Raider reloads. Oh, Regan stranded as Mike takes another dive, blocked by the Raider. Well, he's definitely going for it. Up he goes. Oh, how did he miss that one? Regan grabbing a blue and Trojan grabbing Regan. He's got to let him go. Those are the rules. Up goes Mike and Raider blocks him. Gladiators are not allowed to hang on to contenders. Ten seconds on the clock and another great block by Raider. Regan, a yellow, but he's running out of time. He's not going to be able to bank this one. He's going to have to make do with four. So let's have a look at the scores. Regan, four points. And unfortunately for Mike, no balls. That's no points. Nicely put, John. In the replay, you can see a lot of potential points hit the deck when the big man collided with the cylinder. After four events, Regan six, Mike 12. Next event. First up is Kathy, and she's facing Amazon. Over to John Anderson. Looking at Kathy's stats, 5'8 and weighing in at 10 stone, well made for this event. Although she's giving away a hefty two and a half inches in height and three pounds in weight to Amazon. In the past, the Amazon more associated with alligators than gladiators. Let's go to work. And Kathy trying to canoe down the Amazon. Ten points for the win, five for the draw. And it's good attacking from Kathy. Oh, cops one from Amazon Zama. But still comes back for more. Amazon's first time up on the dueling platform in competition. And if this baker's daughter uses her loaf, she'll pick up five very useful points. Three, two, thank you. A great competition, good solid performance from Kathy. Very pleasing for everybody. And that's something. Amazon was hoping to make her do. In the replay, we can see Kathy gave out a fair bit of stick and took some. Kathy, I've just got one question to ask. Do you canoe? <laughs> it looked as if you were paddling. Are you sure, yeah? Was it that good? It was very good indeed. In fact, you stayed very stable. You looked as if you were going to unsettle Amazon at one stage, but uh, she came back. Me, Bob. Big, strong girl. I think we both did good. You certainly did, and so close to the eliminator, picking up an extra five points. And Amazon, she's tough. She was very tough, but I'm learning every time, and I'll get better. You certainly will. Let's hear it for Kathy and for Amazon. <laughs> Next up is Rachel, and unfortunately for her, she's facing Nightshade. <laughs> Over to John Anderson. Contender! 
glamorous model Rachel told me she's more used to holding a flute than a pugil stick. She stands six foot tall, weighs 150 pounds. As you'll see, she's evenly matched with Nightshade in the height department, but weight-wise giving away four pounds. And Nightshade, a lean, mean, a dueling machine. Let's get to work. A real battle of the six-footers. And Rachel soaking up everything that Nightshade's throwing at her. And let's face it, there's plenty of it. This is shaping up to be better than a Chris Eubank fight. Well, I think that helmet fits now. She started at six foot. She must be about five foot eight now. <laughs> Nightshade really planting her. She's hanging in there, and she's earned her five points the hard way. Brilliant performance by Rachel. Took everything that Nightshade could throw at her. She must be seeing stars. In the replay, took a goodly few to the side of the head, but retained her balance and composure. You did very well to stay on. Yeah, she's, she's quite tough. She gives some hard hits there, definitely. But you were very stable on your feet, which is most important, because you were getting some blows to the head, which can disorientate you. Exactly. They can be quite hard, but I wasn't feeling them. I was just going for it, so... Well, well done. You picked up five points. Well, if there's a champion at Jewel, it's you, isn't it? <laughs> a bit ring rusty today, but um, it was very nice, actually, to fight someone about my own height, because I think you can get more head blows in. What do you say, eh, Rachel? Yeah, it's good to fight someone the same size. It's fun. <laughs> She's smiling. Let's hear it for Rachel and for Nightshade. Well done. After five events, Kathy's on a massive 26, Rachel on 12. And there's a little gladiator of the future, complete with pint-sized pugil stick. So now we move into the men's duel with Regan, and he's facing Rhino! And I have to say, I don't envy Regan, this one. Carries impressive stats himself, six foot tall, over 12 stone, but as you'll see, the Rhino is compact and solid, 5'10 in the height division, but with more than a five-stone advantage in the muscle department. Well, as they face up to each other, earlier, we asked Regan if he had any last thoughts. I'm not worried about any of the gladiators. I think they should be more worried of me, really. <laughs> Strong words. Let's see what Rhino has to say about that. Let's get ready to rumble. And Regan straight in to Rhino's head. Too bad the contest hadn't started. And if you want to wind the Rhino up, that's the way to do it. John Anderson rebukes Regan. Three, two, one. Here we go again. Rhino gets it in the first time, but oh, Regan steps across. Rhino chastises him. Instant disqualification, and the Rhino didn't have to work up a sweat. Rhino struts his stuff. Give us your Elvis, Rhino. Lovely. Establishing himself as a firm favourite here. Regan, it didn't look to me as if you wanted to be in that game. No, I didn't. Not against him anyway. You didn't enjoy it? No, not really. Let's wait for the Eliminator now. Absolutely. That's my time. Right, well, we'll look forward to that, Regan. Off he goes. You're just pretty solid up there, aren't you? Um, I thought he was a nice guy until he bashed me before the whistle, so he had to get it. You take no prisoners. Let's hear it for Rhino. Well done. Yes, Rhino makes Regan eat his words. He'd kick sand in his face, eh? Jewel, it's Mike! And he's facing the Wolfman! Over to John Anderson. Mike, a student, but one has to doubt his wisdom at facing the Wolf. Stands 6-1, 13 stone, whereas the big bad Wolf doesn't need much huffing and puffing to blow his man down. Not with a 21-pound weight advantage. Three, two, one! It's hammer time! A roundhouse from Wolf and a roundhouse from Mike. These two look evenly matched. Fishing out the punishment. Oh, Mike's off balance for a moment and Wolf fails to compound that. Putting a combination together, but he's in trouble at the moment as he takes a few jabs from the Wolf in the face. Oh, he loses his balance and Wolf again fails to get his man down. You need tremendous balance. But five points to Mike. Oh, a little bit of afters there from Wolf. And John Anderson so incensed, he swallowed his whistle. 
Wolf only able to do after the whistle what he failed to do before it. And Mike inviting the Wolf to come on down, but the Wolf preferring to pose on the podium. opinion here you are man of the match yeah i knew that wolf knew it everyone knew it not a problem please for the five points i'll accept it kindly and what can i say time and time again he's a bad loser hey what can i say the guy's got lucky legs. Lucky stayed up. John Anderson, what have you got to say about it? It's important that the game was concluded, and so the score would stand. But I have something I wish to introduce, and I want to introduce it to Wolf. This is a red card. You're off. So the Wolf off for the early bath, and boy, does he need one. your pen and paper let's have a look at the scores after five events Regan stays on six Mike extends his lead to 17 so our contenders no longer have to face our gladiators but of course they do still have to face up to the eliminator so join us after the break here on gladiators <laughs> two exciting eliminators now in the women's competition Rachel's on 12 points Kathy's ahead on 26 points that gives Kathy a 14 point difference which will give her a seven second head start in the eliminator over to Fash thank you Ollie well seven seconds head start is it enough yeah why not can you do it I'm gonna give it my best shot is there any part of the apparatus that you're a little bit worried about not really, no, no. Good. Wish you all the best, Kat. Well, seven seconds you've got to make up. Can you do it, Rachel? It's very possible anything can happen out there. More importantly, have you enjoyed yourself? I've had a great time. I could play the games all day long. Great stuff. Both of you, Kathy, Rachel, wish you all the best. <laughs> oh, what a <laughs> Kathy, you will go on my first whistle. Rachel. You will go on my second whistle. Three, two, one. Kathy O'Dell, a 21-year-old baker from Hull, hoping to marry boyfriend Stephen next year if they've got enough dough. Here comes Rachel Whiteside, a 26-year-old London-based model. Seven seconds to catch up on the Eliminator. Rachel up the rope climb. And there's Kathy giving it some on the overhead ladder. Across the rolling beams onto the cargo net, and that gap getting bigger all the time. Oh, Rachel has fallen. That will cost her 10 seconds. You add seven to that, that's quite a distance. The bigger contenders have an advantage on the earlier power events, so and they must build up a points lead because the eliminator does tend to favor the lighter athlete. Rachel on the cargo nets. And it seems a long way away as Kathy zips down to the final two hurdles. And look at the frustration in Rachel's face. Kathy keeps her composure. And let's hope she's kept a little bit of energy left in those legs for this awesome travelator. Head high, head for home. Yes, she does it! A victory salute and a plate in the quarterfinals. Meanwhile, back at the balance beam, Rachel Whiteside still going for it. Fills her lungs and heads for home. A big smile on her face. She was tremendous in the early events, but the eliminator got the better of her. Thank you! They've been terrific and it's been terrific.
great to have you on the show. You've been so enthusiastic and it sounds as if you've enjoyed the whole thing. Oh, I have. It's been really tough. But when it comes down to the games, I've really enjoyed them. And you've got to do it all over again. Oh, I'm afraid so. <laughs> we look forward to seeing you then. Cathy O'Dell, well done. Yes, well done indeed. And she certainly lived up to her nickname, the Mighty Madeira. Well, Rachel, seven seconds in the end. It was too much to make up. But as you said, you've enjoyed it. And I'm sure you'd love to come back again. I would love to. Had a great time. All the best. Kathy, she did really well. Got anybody out there you want to thank? Just want to thank all my family and friends for coming and supporting me. And the good thing was you've got no injuries at all. Not at all. Well done. Well. Thanks very much. Let's hear it for her. Rachel, a gracious runner-up, and Kathy, a magnanimous winner. So now we move into the men's eliminator, where Mike's hard work has earned him a five-and-a-half-second head start. How do you feel about that, Regan? I'm just going to do my best there. I'm racing against myself, I think. And, Mike, great for you to be able to take part today, let alone come and have a head start in the eliminator. Well, what can I say? This morning, I didn't even know I was going to be on the show, but here I am, just have to see what happens. Best of luck to the both of you. See you at the end. And there's Michael Bates, the man that Mike Renault stood in for after that powerball accident, cheering him all the way. Michael, you will go on my first whistle. Regan, you will go on my second whistle. Three, two, one. Mike Renault attacks the eliminated course. A 22-year-old student from Oxford Brick University, chased by Regan Pilkington, a very fast man indeed. I think Mike better get his skates on. And look at the distance Regan is picking up already as Mike pumps that handbike. And Regan seems to be going twice the speed of Mike, and Mike just not getting to grips with it. They both touch down on the rolling beam. And Mike scrambles into the net, and Regan is now in the lead. Mike seems to be going in slow motion now. Regan Pilkington, our 21-year-old computer technician from Bolton, has programmed himself for this eliminator course. Nice steady balance beam and saves the best till last as he powers up the Travelator. Yes! Geronimo and into the quarterfinals. And is he ever pleased about that? Making up those five seconds. And here comes Mike Reno. He stood in for Michael Bates at the last minute. Did a brilliant job. Great contender. First, I congratulate you. You've made it to the quarterfinals. Thanks, Ollie. That's brilliant. I just cannot believe it. I've had my bad luck this, in this game here. Yeah. And it was my turn then. I deserve it, to be honest, though. You certainly do, cos you were a little bit... Uh, can I say thanks to everybody from Bolton? Yeah. Well done, Regan. We'll see you in the quarter-final. We'll look out for you. <laughs> what a great sport. Yeah. Mike, where did you lose it? Just lost it on a handbike. Didn't get the rhythm going. And now Regan caught right up with me. The cargo net, you started to see him getting ahead. What were your thoughts? I don't know, I was just trying to, I was trying to concentrate on the net, but I saw him out of the corner of my eye. It's quite hard to watch my footing at the same time. Well, never mind. Let's hear it from Mike! Come on! Well done, Mike! Mike Reno, great runner-up, gave 100%. And Regan Pilkington, who's going to catch that bouquet? Who's going to be the lucky bride then? And Mike Reno makes his way over to Michael Bates, the man he replaced early on after Powerball. Well, that's it from us for this week. Join us again next week for more gladiatorial action here on The Gladiators! Aurora! For safety reasons, do not attempt to recreate any of the events you have seen on Gladiators. More members of the public are pitted against the super-fit gym bunnies and buffs who take names like Shadow, Lightning and Hunter. The Gladiators are back next, new to challenge. Whilst over on pick, it's Border Security, America's front line.
Russell.